Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another edition of No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com, the YouTube channel, and No DQ and A videos newest affiliate, RingsideNews.com. 2014 is upon us, and I have a lot of questions here regarding future events in 2014. So let's get started here. First one today comes from Wrong Head. Hey Aaron, I was wondering where do you see John Cena in five to ten years' time? Do you think he'll still be the face of the company? If not, what do you think his role will be in the company? Also, who do you see as the next genuine face if the next generation? I think that John Cena will be the face of WWE as long as his body holds up and he wants to do it. That's just the reality here. WWE has a tendency of taking superstars and milking them for every last dollar. We've seen it with Hulk Hogan, we've seen it with Bret Hart, and now we're seeing it with John Cena. WWE will continue to use him until they cannot get anything more out of him. So a lot of it might depend on John Cena if he decides to step away from the business and take a break or go to a rival company if another one starts up or if TNA somehow rebounds. Um, a lot of things can happen in five to ten years. The wrestling business has seen very sharp and drastic turns over the years. So anything can happen. It's very difficult to predict the future uh, in the wrestling industry. Um, so, you know, I, I think that we will see more John Cena, though, over the next five to ten years, absolutely. All right, this one comes from MMA Mike Zero. Could you see Brock Lesnar challenging for the title after WrestleMania 30 with a better schedule and as a face? Other than the big pop he got when he returned the first time, it felt as if the fans didn't really care to cheer or boo him. I think that it's only a matter of time before Brock Lesnar goes back to being a baby face. I think that they've gotten about as much out of him as possible as a heel. I think you can do him against Undertaker and maybe one or two more matches, but at some point, I think that you're going to see that Lesnar and Heyman split, and you're going to see Brock Lesnar finish up his WWE run as a babyface and maybe challenge Randy Orton for the title, as you mentioned, or which other, um, other superstar is the heel champion. Um, I, I do see that happening with Brock Lesnar being a, uh, a babyface headliner um, towards the end of his run. And he, he apparently has uh, another year left on his contract, so, um, you know, through WrestleMania 31. And uh, they got plenty of time to turn him face and put him against some of the top heels. So I, I definitely see that happening with Lesnar. All right, this one comes from Anti PG Fan. At WrestleMania 30, will we have any matches that we have never seen before? Or will it be like last year, all three main event matches are rematches? I sincerely hope not. If it's one thing that I am tired of, it's these constant WrestleMania rematches. I like seeing something different. But the fact is, it doesn't really matter what WWE does in terms of the matches for WrestleMania. WrestleMania is WrestleMania. It's going to do a huge buy rate. It's going to do close to 1 million buys regardless of what the matches are, if they're new matches or if they're rematches. You know, WWE can get away with a lot of things. So, uh, you know, would not surprise me at all to see several rematches from previous years. I, I just think that it's something they feel comfortable doing. It's easy booking. And, um, you know, they're going to do what they're going to do. Happy birthday. All right, this next one comes from WWE Fan 5. Hey, Aaron, realistically, who would you like to see back for WrestleMania 30? I'd love to see Hulk Hogan back. I think that it would be something special for WrestleMania 30. It's WrestleMania 30. It's a milestone event. Why not bring back arguably the biggest star of all time? So I'd love to see Hogan there. I'd love to see Steve Austin at WrestleMania. I think the odds are against it happening, but... Uh, if there was ever a time for Stone Cold to come back and have one last match, it would be WrestleMania 30. If he doesn't come back for WrestleMania 30, I think that that's going to be the last real good opportunity to bring him back for one more match. So I, I, I think it's m very much a long shot. Um, but yeah, in terms of guys that can realistically appear at WrestleMania 30, 
uh, you know, Hulk Hogan's at the top of the list of guys I would like to see back. Not in the ring in a match, but I'd love to see him come out there maybe as the GM uh, or the uh, guest host for WrestleMania and then uh, beat up 3MB or something like that, give them the big boot and uh, pose for the crowd. That would be a cool, uh, feel-good, nostalgic moment for me. All right, this one comes from Dark Master 22 Hey, Aaron, what did you think of the confrontation between Roman Reigns and Big E Langston? Personally, I cannot wait to see these two go one-on-one. -on -one. Please answer in video if possible, and thank you. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely something interesting, and obviously WWE is planting the seeds for that match. I think that um, you know a one-on-one -on -one match between those two could continue the storyline where the shield breaks up. You can maybe have them try to interfere on his behalf and he doesn't want it. And somehow they end up costing him the match and that furthers the, the uh, friction between the, the group. Um, and, uh, you know, that'll continue to give B Big E Langston a push. I think once Roman Reigns makes the babyface turn, that's when uh, WWE is going to strap that rocket to him and he's going to be a major force. But until then, uh, you can have Big E go over on Roman Reigns and, and continue to push uh, Big E w while... Uh, while you're at it. All right, this one comes from Chase Seagon. Do you think if Sting ever went to WWE um, that the reaction from the fans would not be as big as, say, RVD because not many casual fans of today know of him? Uh, that's a very good point. Would a lot of the younger uh, WWE fans even recognize Sting? I mean, a lot of fans that, that know who Sting is grew up on him. Uh, during the WCW era, and I'm sure that there are some fans, you know, obviously the TNA fan base knows who Sting is, but that's only a small portion of the overall um, wrestling audience, and most of the wrestling fans are watching WWE. Um, the thing that WWE does have to their advantage is the tape library. They have all that footage of Sting, and all they have to do is just air a bunch of video packages, um, you know, career highlights of Sting, uh, to hype him up, and I'm sure a lot of the young fan base would would uh, already get to know him uh, through those video packages, and whenever he would show up, he would get a big reaction because uh, the, the the kids would say, oh, I saw him on TV in that video package. He looks like a really cool wrestler. Um, and hopefully, if, if Sting ever does go to WWE, um, he'll be able to be in top shape and uh, you know live up to uh, what fans see in the old video packages, and he'll have that fire that um, he had in those in those days. All right, last question today comes from San Game Sang One. Hey Aaron, are you not sick and tired of wrestlers like John Cena and Randy Orton still being on top and being the focal point of the show, while wrestlers like Dolph Ziggler, Daniel Bryan, and CM Punk are stuck in the mid card? What are your thoughts on it? Well, first of all, I, I wouldn't say that Daniel Bryan and CM Punk are at Dolph Ziggler's level. I mean, there's a big difference there. Daniel Bryan and CM Punk are still in the top storylines, and, you know, they're feuding with the top heels in the company, like the Shield and the Wyatt family. So, you know, they're, they're still being pushed strong. Uh, just because they're not in the WWE title picture doesn't mean that they're not at the top of the card. Um, you know, they're the number two, number three, number four guy, whatever the order is. I mean, the top four guys in the company right now are Cena, Orton, Bryan, and Punk. Um, and, you know, Dolph Ziggler is stuck there in the mid-card level. Um, you know, things aren't really going to change, at, at least in the short term. I mean, as I mentioned at the beginning, WWE is going to uh, continue to push John Cena as much as they can and get as much mileage out of him as humanly possible. And same thing with Randy Orton. So these guys are going to be around until either they get hurt or they decide to walk away or they have a falling out with the company. Uh, that's just the reality here. Um, you know, very few guys um, leave the business on their own terms. We have had exceptions like Chris Jericho. He walked off. He, he, uh, he's taken breaks over the years. And Batista, you know, he walked away. And um, he left for several years, and finally he came back. And, you know, through WrestleMania, I mean, guys, I, I've talked about this before, guys like Dolph Ziggler and The Miz and Damian Sandow, uh, these guys are going to be in bad, bad spots because, you know, with Batista coming back, with maybe Hogan coming back, all these guys are going to be in the mix at WrestleMania, and it's going to be hard for those mid-card guys to break out of the pack. Uh, you know, it's not going to be until after WrestleMania that, maybe they'll get another chance to uh, 
get in the spotlight again. So, I mean, that that's just the reality of how things are in the WWE landscape right now. So that'll do it for no DQ&A video. I'll see you guys next time for more.